untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to my first Brothers War draft recorded during the early Axis event. Let's go. Pack one, pick one. Open a pretty exciting rare. When a Eyes of Gaia could set us up for a nice ramp deck. Making two mana and potentially picking up some plus one counters. That's probably going to be my first pick. Passing Obstinate Beowulf, which I also wouldn't mind in this type of deck. A card like Shoot Down also becomes playable with tons of artifacts running around. I like the Blitz Automaton, which has prototypes, so has the flexibility of being a 3-drop. I guess the Officer's not bad as a white 1-drop, especially in kind of a Soldier Tribal deck. I like the Engineer making a Power Stone token when it dies. Emergency Weld in black is also pretty decent. Getting back a creature making a 1-1 one -one that you can maybe sacrifice. Any green ramp cards? Not really. I guess there's a tower worker which can make a colorless. There's a keening stone as one of the retro artifacts, which probably need to activate it three times at least, but it will eventually win the game. Not seeing anything too exciting. Could always take a recluse as a fine defensive green creature. And uh, yeah, I think when in doubt, a card that makes mana is not a bad idea in this format. Audacity is also reasonable, but it's probably better suited for a more aggressive deck, whereas we're trying to ramp into big stuff. Can't really go wrong with a Foundry Inspector when we're trying to ramp into big artifact creatures. Yeah, lots of red cards here, Automaton, Swift Spear, good in a Prowess deck perhaps. There's a Chanter which would go in the same type of deck. But uh, yeah, nothing too exciting. Overall, pretty weak pack, I would say. I think Inspector probably edging out Shoot Down, but not by much. What's in this pack? Can't really go wrong with a Pristine Talisman, although there's also the Coilos Rock. And I wouldn't mind going blue green, since that's kind of the ramp archetype. There's also, I guess, the Argothian Sprite, which I'm also a fan of. Good to drop early, gives us a mana sink late. So we have three great options. I think I'm still kind of leaning Coilos Rock, even though it does commit us to a second color, whereas Sprite keeps us more open. All right, fine, I'll go with the Sprite. And then I don't think I'm going to wheel one of these, but one can hope. Okay, there we go. There's a Cradle Clear Cutter, Spotter Thopter, both cards I would be very happy with. Even the Golem, there's another Coilless Rock. So this pack has it all. If we could just take the pack and move on to pack two, I think I would. Even the Prowler's decent, early creature can find a land more often than not. What's the highest upside card here? Probably the Clear Cutter can play it early to ramp into other prototype creatures. And, uh, can add a ton of mana if we do play it for six, setting up our next big play. Does not trigger Gwenna, I suppose, but neither does Thopter, which I think would be the pick over Golem. But uh, still hoping to wield the Golem at some point. Ooh, nice. Excavation, make three Power Stone tokens, gain three life. That's what I'm talking about. Makes it trivial to cast a 6-mana Clear Cutter on the following turn. And now we can pretty much take all the prototype creatures we see, including the 10-mana common in green. There's a Giant Growth as well. The Paul Bearer is more for a black-green graveyard deck as opposed to what we're trying to do, although it could still potentially make the cut. And yeah, not really interested in a random equipment, archaeologists, not going to be at its best in a creature-heavy deck. Another excavation, although I should probably consider the rock, since blue seems open and no one seems interested in the excavations. I'm not afraid of sending the wrong signal necessarily. And uh, 
Yeah, I think blue-green is going to be the best fit for this type of deck. And the uh, Savant would actually also be decent to wheel, since we can use Power Stone tokens to activate it. But uh, the Rock is a decent board presence while still ramping us. Okay. Yeah, I think Colossus is fine. 6 mana, 6-6. Six, six. Probably not going to attack with it for a while, but eventually we can spend 3 mana on tapping it. Splitting the Power Stone would require some cheap artifacts to sacrifice, which we don't really have. I don't think that's what we need here. And then, once again, shoot down could be fine in this deck. Time to pick up shoot down, or do I take a retrieval unit? A little bit overcosted, perhaps, but still a decent card. If we're trying to ramp, shoot down gives us some interaction, but I feel like we're gonna get more of these later. So maybe I'll still take the retrieval unit. Could also consider taking automaton just as a seven drop, but for now I'm still hoping to stick to blue-green in terms of prototype creatures. Um, but if we feel like we're short on top end, I can start taking some off-color prototypes as well. Recluse versus maybe a Bulwark as a cheap defensive creature. Green can sometimes struggle with opposing flyers, but we're going to be blue-green, so we're going to have a few flyers of our own. I could see the advantage of the earlier blocker against some aggressive decks. And not really interested in a 2-2 flyer with prowess. That's not what this deck is all about. Maybe the wings will make the cut, but I doubt it. Okay, so good start to a blue-green ramp deck, I would say. Nothing here I really want. Guess I'll take a Juggernaut on the off chance we pivot into a red. And uh, yeah, Prowler's decent. I think I prefer it over the first Gnarl route. Alrighty. So let's keep opening more big green creatures. That also counts. Simeon Simulacrum, Antra's putting two counters somewhere, can unearth it as well. Otherwise, the Steel Seeker would actually be pretty decent in this deck. Got plenty of artifacts. This can find lands, which we can't really go wrong with. And uh, let's see, Self Assembler finds assembly workers, including Tower Worker. I think that's the only assembly worker so far. Animation could also be decent if we pick up some more cheap artifacts or power stone tokens. But for now, I think it's Simulacrum, Hope to Wheel, Steel Seeker. Nothing too exciting here, unfortunately. Could take a power plant worker, although it doesn't trigger Gwena. Could take an off-color automaton or even the overwhelming remorse as removal, although that's going to be much better in black green if we have more self-mill effects with cards like Prowler enabling it. So, yeah, bit of a miss here. Taking a look at my curve, could see an argument for a worker. Although we're not super committed to blue yet, I guess we have Colossus and Rock. I guess there is still a world where I end up black, green, and then Remorse is going to be much better for us. Okay, there's another Remorse. The uh, Sanctum as well. Decent land if we make a few bear tokens with it. And also enable some graveyard synergy, so also going to be at its best in black, green. And then there's the Sentinel in blue, decent 2-drop that can save a creature and present a flyer at the same time. Those are the main considerations, besides another Remorse. Even the Stern Lesson would be decent for blue-green, as it still ramps us. Yeah, I think I'll try the Remorse. If we wheel the Sanctum, then that's nice. Oh, nice... Another clear cutter. Hope to wheel emergency weld. 
even the dissident would actually be decent, but I uh, don't know if we want to go in three colors necessarily, and um, got two good black cards now. There's another Colossus in blue, but we'll just stick to the good green card for now. What do we have here? More ramp with a tower worker. Could consider armor if we go mono green, but I don't think that's maybe the best idea. So we take a pallbearer now in case we find more self mill synergies, or I can take the kind of boring safe pick of another tower worker. Although now I already have tower worker, Gwenna, and double clear cutter at three mana. I could see taking a more expensive creature instead. Ooh, Beloth. Six pick, I'll take it. There's also Coilor's Rock and Urza in the same pack. Both cards I wouldn't mind if I was going blue, but we're definitely green. And I'm still kind of undecided between my second color. So that makes this an easier decision, I think. The blue cards do keep flowing here. There's another Pallbearer. Close to having enough artifacts for it. Keeper if we're afraid of milling. And uh, Stern Lesson again would be decent too. Fracture would be better if we had more Sacrifice Fodder. So sure, I'll try the Pallbearer. Yeah, I think I have two blue cards. I guess Bulwark also kind of a blue card. We have three blue cards here versus two black cards. Although if we go black green, then the pallbearer will also probably get better. And there's no compelling blue cards here, but there is a compelling black card. So sure. And I could take another caress or a self assembler, which I don't mind. Yeah, I think going 3-drop into 5-drop is going to be a pretty uh, common play pattern in this deck, so having decent 5-drops is going to be important. And then we can maybe hope to wheel the other 5-mana assembly worker, or just try and get more self-assemblers to chain d those together. Similar to the 1-3 defender in Dominaria, you can now just play a bunch of 5-mana 4 force that find additional copies. And let's see here. Could always go with a giant growth as a combo trick. Maybe Clay Revenant could speculate on a third color with a brush land. Yeah, could see myself playing a giant growth. Probably don't need Stalwart. It's not the worst with cards like the uh, Prowler that can help us tap for mana afterwards. But seems a bit slow. Alright, Colossus Wield. Guess we could always play that 9 mana if we need a finisher. And this could also maybe fix our mana if needed. Alright, nice. Wield the Assembly Worker. Definitely on the lookout for more expensive prototype creatures. Did not wield the last Steel Seeker, could take one now. There's also Epic Confrontation as a decent removal spell. And another Obstinate Baloth. Yeah, the Steel Seeker is tempting. It's a 2-drop we can play early that passively just finds more lanes. And we have a decent number of artifacts to go with it. Obstinate Baloth, not a bad card, but just a 4 mana 4-4 four, four that gains a bit of life at the end of the day. So I think it's probably Steel Seeker versus Confrontation. And I think I like Steel Seeker more. Just has a potential of drawing like two or three cards in a game. Give us some more card selection. Ooh. Is this a 
processor deck would actually be okay. Although I can also just take another Ergothian Sprite or Remorse, which are both quite decent. Yeah, Processor is one of those weird cards. If we play it in a board stall, this can completely take over. Baloth can also gain a bit of life to offset it. That's nice. But um, if we're facing an army of flying creatures, for instance, it doesn't help. Yeah, I think for science, I'm going to take it just to try it out here. See if it's busted or just okay. And then hope to wheel one of these two, but I doubt it. Ah, that's funny. Howling Mine actually works with a green one drop that can tap artifacts and creatures to make one mana. To kind of break the symmetry of Howling Mine. Had we taken those, I could have seen myself maybe trying out the Howling Mine combo. As is. Kind of liking the Butcher as a mana sink to drain the opponents. There's another Tower Worker. Those are probably the main considerations. Animists, kind of pricey to make 4-4s, four but not a bad mana sink. I'll try the Butcher here. Ooh, Battery Bearer. Why do you show up so late? I think I gotta pivot into blue now. This card is just too good. What am I giving up in black? Butcher, double remorse, caress. Yeah, that's fine. And then we'll have access to double colossus as a decent win condition now. And maybe still splash black. But uh Yeah, I'm gonna take this battery bear. There's a stalwart I was talking about a second ago. Forcer would be better in black-green. Could still take it. In blue we have like a scatter ray. Which doesn't really fit our game plan, I don't think. Or we could take a swift gear drake as kind of a filler 5-drop. I'll try a courser. That's a late confrontation. I'll take it. Over Recluse. And then the rock seems perfect. Alright, so I didn't quite get as many prototype creatures as I would have liked. And there's another one. I don't think we're going with the stalwart. Yeah, clear cutter is great, although we really would have preferred more high powered creatures to go with Gwenna. There's Baloth versus the uh, Paul Bear. Given that we have the Rexian processor, I'm kind of liking Baloth. Otherwise, I could have considered Paul Bear as a larger creature that also um, pumps Gwenna. And I guess we'll take one now, or maybe a stern lesson for a bit of card selection. Still makes a power stone. All right. There's no shortage of pallbearers, apparently. Agent is decent filler too. Already have two pallbearers, to be fair, but I think we can't really go wrong with more expensive creatures. Okay, I think I'm just going blue-green. Not going to bother with black, even though we have some good black cards. It's definitely true that the decks so far haven't seemed incredibly color-intensive, so you can probably get away with a greedier mana base in a way, especially if you have a few things like Energy Refractor to help out. But we didn't even pick up Evolving Wilds, so... Probably don't need Refractor. The Drake can probably go. 
Maybe one pallbearer. Need to make eight cuts. So yeah, it's not easy. Art quality is relatively high. How does uh, Inspector interact with Bear? I think it still works out fine. It doesn't say when you spend six mana. All right, so these are more three drops. Our draw seems important. Agent can probably go. Retrieval unit seems cuttable, although if we want to get up to nine mana, not actually all that bad. Got lots of fives. One excavation should be serviceable. I'll cut one pallbearer. We could see getting rid of this one, although it does have reach, admittedly. Which is not irrelevant. Don't have that many flying creatures myself. And I can find a worker with a self-assembler if I already drew my power plant worker, I suppose. Because we have three assembly workers. Yeah, I think I should keep the worker. Bulwark maybe closest to being cut, although it still surveils, which is good with Allbearer and Corsair. Just gives me another mana sink. And it can trade early if needed. Pretty happy we picked a processor since our deck's kind of light on big expensive creatures. I wonder if we actually need excavation. Because it doesn't help to cast Pallbearer on the following turn. Only really great with double Colossus. And if we want to maybe play Clear Cutter. If we picked up more like prototype creatures, I would have been more in favor of excavation. But it's probably fine to cut it here. I have more cuts. This is tough. I guess retrieval units, probably one of our weaker cards. Dying growth can probably go. And then three more cuts. Maybe the Gaia's Courser. Don't really have a ton of ways to help get it in for damage. Was, would be better if I had more cards like Giant Growth, or if I had more Graveyard Recursion. It's kind of like a 4-5 that maybe draws a card, but probably dies in the process, and maybe has to make a bad attack to draw a card. I could see cutting that one. And then, do I cut a Pallbearer too? Maybe. Does work well with Gwenna, but not the best with kind of our artifact synergies. But uh, one is probably fine. Last cut. I think I like the assembly worker package, just because our deck is pretty light on card draw effects. We can make a lot of mana, but then we don't necessarily have ways to spend all that mana. The creature that finds another creature is exactly what our deck is looking for. And then the uh, worker, we can also spend mana pumping, so that's nice. The more artifacts, the better Steel Seeker as well. I don't think I want to cut my flyer. Could potentially see myself cutting a land since we have lots of other ramp. And flooding is somewhat of a concern. Like I can still play these for 6 mana. They don't have to be 9 drops. Although, to be fair, most of my 3 drops that make mana can also make additional green. So I'm not going to struggle to get double green for Baloth. I should probably go 7-9. And I can still cast lots of artifacts without uh, proper mana necessarily. Okay, this seems good. Lands look nice. Pick a sleeve. And we'll be on our way. This one's actually pretty fitting. Colossal Assembly Required would be a good deck name. Alright, this is not bad. Can go worker into Koilos Rock. 
developer board a little bit before playing processor maybe. Also want to figure out if our opponent's capable of destroying artifacts, because if they are with red mana, then I may be better off waiting until I can at least make a token right away, or maybe try and flush out some artifact removal. Because it would be pretty painful to pay a bunch of life and have the opponent kill our processor. When on Junt's sacrifice. Runner also works well with uh, Evolving Wilds, of course. Okay, our Gothian Sprite. At least the uh, tokens we generate are just black tokens. Alright, so we're gonna sit on our Coil Lost Rock. Maybe ambush a sprite. That would be the dream. Does it work? Or do we see a trick? Right, giant growth, fair enough. Still might throw off the opponent's curve here. And that's a giant growth down. Bodyguard, okay. Well, kind of need this uh, Paul Bear to stick around. And then... Next turn, let's see, four... Yeah, we could play Processor and activate it. So that's gonna be fun. And then the question is, how much? Gotta watch out for Active Treason effects as well in red. Healing my creature for a turn. Acrobat can gain flying. So we're probably not gonna go too crazy. Okay, Clear Cutter, I don't think changes our play. Let's see... And activate this at instant speed at least. Yeah, this is an important decision. Kind of have to do math here, like how quickly does Acrobat kill me if it attacks a few turns in a row. So let's say I pay 7 life, I'm at 12, then this is a 4 turn clock. Maybe paying 5 life, being at 14, uh, or I guess 6 life still works, being at 13, and then this isn't quite lethal in 4 turns. Yeah, I think I like that. X equals 6. Engineers, okay. At least it doesn't blow up artifacts. Would be a little overpowered, I guess. Blast Runner, Acrobats, Attack. So they might have another giant growth here, who knows. I guess 6-6 six, six on 2-2 two, two. plays around giant growth. They might have a gopher to throw it as well. It also double block the blast runner, but I feel like we'll be able to block it pretty easily next turn, and I'm kind of more scared of the sprite long term. Or am I? Yeah, I think this is fine. We're at seven. But I can play a clear cutter. Steel Seeker first. Let's see. I go Steel Seeker, Clear Cutter for three mana. And still make a token, right? Two, three. One, two, three, four. Yes. And power plant worker. Yeah, I mean it's not bad, but I think I'm more interested in finding either like a removal spell or more reach creatures or something even bigger. Maybe some life gain off some Baloth. And 
and then points at 20. How aggressive can I get? At 7. Worker does have reach, so that's important. Probably fine to hit for 6 at least. I think I should actually tank with both. Keep up the pressure here. One jumping. If they have a giant growth and I don't block the acrobat, they could put me to one. It's gonna be a crusher instead. Or six, so glad we made a six six processor. So they could pump their flyer with it, so it's important that we keep our reach creature back. But the six six can attack. If they have removal for worker, I guess we could be dead. One falls to three. no reason not to. Although if they have a trample trick, they just trample the acrobat, I guess. Plus two and trample is not enough, luckily. This figure, okay. Did we get there? And an infantry. Alright, looks like we got there. Peace. Processor steals the show. Alright, it's on the play and seems decent. Mono black so far, and a war plow. Oh, can attack past that one at least. Next turn, Bayloth. Turn after, maybe a six mana clear cutter. Okay. Bonus stuck on two. Lesson's not bad either. Bayloth does get blocked by the war plow, so it's not. Gonna help to apply immediate pressure. We could see the advantage of lesson plus maybe bulwark, or we can discard bulwark. I guess see what we draw first. Yeah, that's fine. The next turn I can clear cutter. Or six, and then we would love to draw more expensive artifacts. The mask can make an XX Olus artifact creature, so still won't be able to block the sprite. Opportunist is nice, makes a power stone when it enters. I was almost tempted to trade there, since the Death Toucher is eventually going to be something we need to get rid of, but um. Yeah, the bear was a nice draw. If I play that, I'm setting myself up to draw with a clear cutter. That seems worthwhile. If I tap slightly differently, I could have played a 3 mana clear cutter, but I didn't think I was interested in that. 
Hope they don't remove the bear, and then we can pull ahead. Of course, trading for Warplow is no guarantee that it stays gone forever, since they might be able to get it back from the graveyard. So, Black Green Graveyard deck for our opponents, gets a land. And yeah, Emergency Well, the type of card that could get a Warplow back. Deal Seeker. Okay, yeah, so our opponent's mana troubles are over. But our mana fun begins. The mask would have been pretty decent in our deck too. Rexian Processor would be one of our better draws here. Okay, so how do we sequence here? Probably another six mana clear cutter, maybe tapping a clear cutter. And then maybe assembler for the other assembly worker before we draw it. No shortage of mana. Although attacking profitably is a different problem here. Yeah, I guess we can also use the pallbearer to increase the clear cutter's power to make more mana. Would be an interesting line. Six six attacking. So they might have plus two plus one lifelink. Although that wouldn't really explain the stack necessarily. What makes sense? I guess the indestructible trick or whatever. Although double block would still be fine, I think. Would just be instant speed removal. I guess that's the one that makes the most sense. Five mana, exile a creature. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll set up a better block next turn. Crusher's not bad. Would have been nice in our deck too. Although, there we go. Colossus. Let's do some math. If I play Paul Bear, pumping clear cutter. Yeah, I mean, we should be fine. Could also go with a six mana version, but nah. Alright. So now I can set up better blocks. If they have removal, they probably get rid of Colossus before attacking now. Another thing, Mask. Okay. So they've got other plans. There we go. All right. I can play Baloth to gain four up to 17. And then how much life is a question. I'm kind of feeling 10, maybe 11. Is that greedy? They could still destroy it as a problem here. It may not stick around forever. I'll go 11. Six or seven could be enough, unless they play the 10-10, and I don't really have removal for it. Should be able to still play this and activate processor, so that's fine. I mean, it's not like we're playing against a red deck that's gonna have direct damage. I guess there is like the one four that drains for two. And there could be flying creatures in our future too. 
Although we have at least one Reacher. Okay, that's fine. This also would have been nice with a processor. Gain some more life, pay more life. Another Beowulf, perfect. Alright, so if I attack with the 11, they just trade for the Death Toucher, maybe get it back. I mean, I should probably wait until I have a few of them. Suppose I could attack with the uh, the Worker, since that one trades for a 6-6 six, six either way. That's the only great attack we have. Can also start bumping the sprite, I suppose. Just want to reduce their board as much as possible and take over with our 11 11s. That's fine. Can only activate once. And yeah, that's why we made an 1111 processor. In case a 1010 shows up. So this is the priority. And then any leftover mana I can spend here. Probably okay to start attacking now. I guess even the sprite could have attacked, since all the larger creatures are artifacts, and the Death Toucher also cannot block it. And at next turn, probably see a couple trades, but it's going to boil down to whether or not they find an answer to processor soon. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty challenging. Yeah, when a nine nine is too small to attack, what a world we're living in. When a ten drop isn't the biggest thing on the board. Well, this is an attack for lethal, so <laughs> one probably wants to block at least one of them. Yep, that makes sense. Great trade. Yep, that's what I figured. All right, Argothian Sprite, it's your time to shine. Against Old Trumpet with the Prowler and the Opportunist, Steel Seeker eventually. 13 cards remaining. It's a flyer, although their 10, 10 does have reach. Yeah, I think we attack with the sprites. They won't be able to kill it. Five, six, nine. We can pump it. Yep. Okay. Well, so far so good. Still no answer to the processor. And they're running out of cards on library. This figure, a little bit small. Great card though. And a Bailoth. Can easily untap the Colossus if needed. Simulacrum? What does that do for me? 
put counters on Colossus. Can untap it, attack with all the 11 powered creatures and sprites. Probably reasonable. Have to be a little careful on the way back, I guess. Although, losses we could untap, so that's probably the one that trades for the, uh, the Death Toucher. Yeah, the sprite's the biggest creature on the board right now. Have to watch out for opposing pallbearers pumping their creature. They probably have quite a few creatures in graveyard now. Actually, not quite that many. Heal Seeker has done its job. Gets thrown under the bus. And yeah, it looks like our opponent's trying to set up maybe a lethal attack on the way back. We have to be careful about instant speed removal on a creature blocking their trampler. Because if we only block it with an 11-11, they kill it, so we could die. But nope, looks like they don't have it. Sweet. Well, processor, we chose the right number. Processor nor opener. A little bit of ramp. Yeah, I mean, we could use more early creatures. I guess lesson still ramps at least. And then hopefully we're not under too much pressure and processor can take over once again. Battery bearer, also a welcome addition. Alright. That's a lot of damage. Confrontation. It's gonna be a little late to the party. So not the start we wanted to see. Ouch. Perfect curve out. Clear cutter versus turn lesson. Well, either way, next turn we can bear, which will block. So for now, maybe try and stem the bleeding and trade for the harvester. We'll have to watch out for the genius's ability too. What if I block genius itself? Then we don't trade. This only pumps other creatures. I think I still like trading. And the Juggernaut in the graveyard is also scary. Although they put it in hand. Okay. Hope this one survives. Okay, that's fine. The confrontation would get this up to a 4 6. It can kill Juggernauts. Or I can just play a 6 6. Although we're dead to an act of treason if that's the case. Although, yeah, I guess we would be able to survive it with confrontation. Confrontation's a safer play, although it does put the opponent in a spot where they just unearth it next turn. And still attack with it at least once. Losses is the better kind of long-term plan if they don't have either removal or a way to steal it. Yeah, I think I still go for Colossus here. And cross our fingers. I think an act of treason is going to be hard to beat regardless. Yeah, this game does not look great for Processor, so... It does have limitations. Our opponent can pump the Juggernaut here with Genius. Hmm, I guess it also gives Menace. I guess I'm just dead anyways. Alright, the Menace part I kind of missed. Fair enough. Not sure what the correct play was then, maybe... Yeah, maybe kill Juggernaut after all. Although our opponent just had a great start. Yeah, there we go. Two drop into Gwena, or pack one, pick one. 
and then hoping to find some expensive creatures along the way. Alright, fair enough. Bonan did a good job masking that they didn't have a play. A good lesson to learn early in the format, I guess. Alright, so I could go Steel Seeker, plus maybe Stern Lesson, or I can just play a six mana clear cutter. Probably better. We have all the mana we need if we get to untap. Turn less room for card drawn to find some action. All of the host is scary. Simulacrum's not bad. Putting counters on clear cutter is also quite the combo here. So sure, we can try that. Maybe still play Steel Seeker first. Do I want a sprite? Sure, why not? Lesson to draw it. And then probably don't need land anymore. Alpha Stumbler I'll keep. So don't need to play another artifact since we're happy with our top card. Play sprites. Okay, that was a pretty sweet turn. Our opponent to copy Medic. And time for a self assembler, maybe. So let's resolve this one first. I guess the other way around makes a little bit more sense. Yeah, yeah, this is fine. Confrontation. It's good, not amazing. Might be good enough. Could also start pumping the sprite here if I'd like. I guess threat of activation attack, see what they do. And if not, play some uh, creatures out. Yeah, two damage is fine. Missing out on a little bit of value here, but that's okay. Next turn, kill something and then spend our mana pumping Sprite, I guess. When we can start copying the Elite, so that's maybe what we need to kill now. And then, what do I fight with? Maybe the clear cutter, since that's maybe not going to attack and tap for mana instead. If we can avoid a bigger creature getting copied by Helm, we should be okay.
Okay, Clear Cutter can attack. But it does have some decent blocks available, admittedly. Maybe I'm still better off pumping sprites. Cannot quite pump it twice, but can get up to a 6-6. Six, six. And I guess our opponent can also pump with a paratrooper. I don't actually have amazing attacks. I guess never mind. I do have worker as well. I can pump sprite twice up to an 8-8. Eight, eight. Although, is that enough to give me a good attack with it? I don't think so. Alright, let's just go bail off and pass, I guess. I need to find a Frexian processor to keep up with Helm of the Host. Or I need them to not have 5 mana to pump the team, I guess. That also helps. Yeah, a bit of a staring contest. Helm of the Host. Incredibly powerful card, of course. Another clear cutter. So I can pump up to a 10 10. I could kill it, but they would lose the equipped creature and paratrooper in the process. The so sprite can probably still attack and then probably take it from there. Okay, more equipment. Bonus still kind of forced to keep up 5 mana for Paratrooper. There we go. Now we're talking. Alright, let's attack first. Alright, X equals 21 is a little much, but uh, we'll find a good middle ground. Yeah, 11 might be a good number. Because it gets past like a 3 toughness and a 7 toughness. Or two 5 toughness creatures. Helm of the Host versus Processor. Who wore it best? They do sort of cancel each other out until we make enough Processor tokens, so I think we'll still have the late game here. I guess our opponent's not too far from activating Pyre Trooper twice. But uh for now this seems good. Pretty close to sending the entire team. Seeker putting in some work finally. That's fine. I guess I could start copying a flyer too, but it's probably too late. And our opponent explodes. Processor claims another victim. Okay, missing green mana. Although a single green and this hand is almost perfect. On the draw, 
think we gotta believe. Okay, another bird. Not quite what we need, although it will be good once we find green mana. Turn three Gwenna. Turn four bird. Uh oh. Turn two dissident is scary. That's another green card. Okay. Well, this could get awkward real quick. Alright, that one we don't really care about, at least. Okay, I'll take it. Also encounter on a double striker, that's painful. Alright, they uh, put it elsewhere. Alright, nice. And then hopefully next turn we can unload their own inspector. This it into 4 4, that's fine. At least we don't need to fear a one mana combo trick since this is symmetrical. Alright, so what's the best we can do here? Can't quite play the uh, nine mana Colossus. Could play a clear cutter times two, like a small version and a big version. Or we can flash in a bird and play a two mana clear cutter. Yeah, close call. Feels like double spelling makes sense, so I'll play two mana clear cutter and. Probably go for a bird here. So far, the Throne of Amethyst has uh, impacted the opponent more than it has us. I can play the Big Colossus now. Or I could wait to maybe draw the 4-drop that draws off casting expensive artifacts. Eh, I'll just run it out now. And we'll see if they have an answer. Yeah, I'm also kind of surprised they didn't put more counters on the Thresher. Maybe afraid of artifact removal. Okay, fair enough. 3-5. To block our bird. Does not block our Colossus all that well. Right, just a chump. And then I can still untap Colossus. Playing another bird probably doesn't help much if they have a 4 6 reach back. Our deck does not have much interaction, so don't expect to get rid of the Goliath anytime soon. And yeah, three counters is quite a boost. So it looks like another board stally game that's going to end up in us needing to draw processor. But yeah, it looks pretty good on this board. Okay, just in time. We can epically confront the Goliath. Question is if I still get to attack afterwards. Because it would be dealt 7 damage at 11 toughness. I mean, I could attack with, like, everyone but the clear cutter. And then if they want to eat the 3-2, then they're taking 10. So they're probably taking the trade. And then taking, like, 6. We add another bird to the board. Not a great trade. Okay, 
I mean, a dissident is scary, and it could turn out to be a fine trade, depending on their hand, especially if they remove Colossus. But they didn't remove it so far. Alright, they had another one. And their own clear cutter. Okay, so we've got our birds packing in here. That clear cutter is going to make a lot of mana. Yeah, I mean, the cool thing about the set, I guess, is that there's not a whole lot of multicolor cards. The multicolor section's way shorter than in previous expansions. But, uh,. Yeah, the ones that are present in the set are quite powerful. Better to keep Baloth. Still on tap Colossus. Two turn clock in the air. So we're looking good. Blue mana could maybe change the outcome. Another Beloth. Are we close to attacking with all? Yeah, maybe. Could be unnecessarily aggressive here, but I also don't want to give them more time than we need to. And this way, if they wanted to maybe set up a double block, it wouldn't be as effective. works for me. This will need a third land. If we find it, we should be okay. And then we even have the clear cutter plus simulacrum combo, put counters on it to increase its power, make more mana. But we'll see here. Opponent's gonna break up some of our synergies. Maybe take the clear cutter. <laughs> take the Baloth, please. Although I guess it exiles the Baloth, so it doesn't actually discard it. Yeah, it's the other one I think that discards. Opponents took our 6 drop, that's fine. Hmm. Heal Seeker is an interesting draw. I'm still happy playing a Baloth next turn. Ideally, let's see. Yeah, I guess we have to choose between getting value of Steel Seeker or getting the Simulacrum Clear Cutter synergy going. But there's not too much instant speed removal they could have here. That messes with the clear cutter. I'm kind of liking Simulacrum make a bunch of mana. And then I could play a Baloth afterwards. And then next turn, Steel Seeker into Assembler. Alright, Battle Thopter could be scary. Slowly grows over time, lets them play artifacts at instant speed. Yeah, let's attack with Baloth. Uh, 
Alright, happy to kill the flyer. Reveal land, perfect. Okay, off to a good start. Great spot to find a processor as well at 24 life. Not under any immediate pressure. Looks like they might have a way to get their creature back. Emergency weld. Okay. So they can flash in their 1 2 once again. And uh, yeah, we're probably just gonna smash with. I think everyone, if Simulacrum trade, I guess everyone but Steelseeker. Simulacrum trades, I'm happy to unearth it. Right, plenty of value of Steelseeker. And now we can still activate Worker, we can unearth Simulacrum, and hopefully top deck some expensive cards. We'll see if our opponent can stabilize. Right, spider's not bad. Ooh, nice. Not the best attack here, unless I want a Simulacrum. But also Simulacrum put more counters on the clear cutter. In which case, let's see. Get up to 5 power, 6, 7, 8. I think still one short of playing a 9 mana Colossus. So, just play 9 mana Colossus and see where we end up. Yeah, I'll keep a stern lesson in this card lands. Don't really want to trade assembler for either one of the opponent's creatures. Opponent finally kills Steelseeker. Fair enough. Okay, so 9-9 nine, nine can attack. Could even put more counters on it first. Although they could still triple block even 11-11. So, counters on Assembler first might be better, or I can Stern less and see what we draw. How about another Colossus? I think I'm still liking Simulacrum this turn. Pump Assembler, attack with the team, or well, I guess uh, Clear Cutter stays back. Because I cannot play a 9 mana Colossus. And then we can untap Colossus. I wouldn't be surprised to see a triple block on Colossus. Not sure if there's any real reason to play my forest. Well, that would have stabilized them. I guess it's okay to trade, that way they cannot double block.
Wouldn't we'll stop decking, and we've got two bigger tankers now. I like my spot. If I draw processor, I'll do it for 20. All right, that's actually one of the better tricks they could have here. Wait for the clear cutter or even eat it for free. Gain five. Draw a card. If they find removal, we could be in trouble. All right, guess your opponent was in chum block mode and they didn't like that. Sweet. And this is a beautiful hand. Prowler into Gwenna. Hopefully set up an early processor. Don't think there's any flash creatures in blue black. But there could be counter spells. I think still Gwenna here. Maybe play a six mana clear cutter next turn. And just cycling a moment. Don't think there's any insta speed card draw in in black for double black at least that I can think of. All right, so we're off to the races here. French Stalker can gain Death Touch and Life Link at instant speed potentially. But this seems like a good spot for a processor. Can play processor activate it. This won't help with that. What's her number? Kind of liking 11. Uh-oh, flying stalker, that could be bad. At least we've got a Baloth to gain some life. I can go up to six, that still leaves me dead. I need to stern lesson to look for something. Could also surveil first. Don't think I'll have the mana for it. I don't think, let's see, I guess assembler gets the reach creature to save us for a turn. Although I think I'm one mana short of actually searching it up and casting it. It's power five or greater. Bailth up to six is not enough. Yeah, I guess we process too much. If 
five. Yeah, one mana short, sadly. Well, still kind of an epic way to go down, I guess. Processor giveth and the processor taketh. Yeah, flying creatures are always the downfall of a large processor. But so it goes. Still pretty great run and uh, can't complain here. Crank some packs. Pack one, pick one. Fauna Shaman seems like a great one. Especially in these ramp decks where you want to find your curve toppers late game and help you discard some mana creatures and find your Colossus, for instance. Uh, Loran, also great. Plenty of targets for it, of course. You can maybe even get it back to recur it from the graveyard and to replay it a few times. That would be my pick. Uh, to Kajal's kind of sketchy, being three colors. I've seen the Thopter be pretty great. Just a uh, two drop that leaves behind a 1 1 flyer. Can't really ask for more. And then the Goliath, also a fun one in the ramp decks. Could have used that one in a run as well to have an extra reach creature. Elden, due to haste, can maybe get your card back when it dies. Yeah, it's okay. Could go a few different ways here. Tactician's pretty good. Burnished Heart for Ramp. Rock has also been decent. Ooh, Yogmoth Praetor. Nice in a black aggro deck. Just make sure you have a low enough curve to enable it. And, uh,. Seems like a, a decent pick. Dissidence also pretty good. I've seen this with a few artifacts, especially a bunch of Power Stone tokens at once. And get out of hand. Yogmoth probably at its best in kind of the blue-black draw 2 archetype with a bunch of cheap flyers. Okay. Well, that was a pretty successful draft, all things considered. And I hope you enjoyed. We'll be back with more the Brothers War content on the channel in the coming days, so stay tuned for that. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.